Now I can just hold it up here too. Um, the last thing was a glue block that I didn't show was a glue block. Okay, and I meant to show that. And as as An uh, Anthony and I were talking at the break, if you were a Northland wood turner and you didn't know how to do a glue block, Danny Marino would have taken you aside and showed you how to do one so you don't waste wood. Okay, that was a really big thing for him is not wasting wood. So of course I never turned burls until I learned a lot more stuff. <laughs> so anyway. So on a glue block, first thing you're going to do, you're, you'll make your piece, whether it's on a face plate or a chuck, however you're going to do it. Doesn't matter. Okay. You're going to measure how, how wide this is. Okay. It's actually best to use a compass. This is what I have. So this is what I'm going to show. I will measure from the center out to the outside edge, like so. Okay. So it's, so it's like that. Okay. Then I'm going to go over here to my piece. Pretend there's not a hole in this piece. Okay. <laughs> this is my demonstration piece. So I'm going to mark out a line here like, so I know where that's at. Thank you, Mike. So you know, I'm going to mark out a line here so I know where that's at, okay? Then I'm going to make a circle around on this piece, best I can with my compass, okay? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to put a dot of glue right in the middle, okay? Probably size of a dime or so. Then make another, a circle of glue right on top of that, okay? And then, so there's gonna be one right in the center of this glue block and one right around it like that. And then I'm going to press that in there. Actually, before I do that, so the glue's on this piece, okay? This piece over here's already cut, got a little concave to it. I'm gonna spray this side with accelerator. Then I'm gonna use that line I drew on it and I'm gonna line that up and I'm gonna mark that and put that glue block on there. Then I'm just gonna leave this sit for a while, okay? So it holds. And then I'm going to mount it up like this, and I'm going to use my glue. I'm trying to get a spot where I can hold it where you can see it. Like so. I'm going to make a little, for lack of a better description, like a, a weld bead, a bead of weld around with glue around that whole thing, whole outside of that, that waste block. This is the waste block, around the waste block. Okay. And then once that's in there and I've if there are air bubbles, I'm going to take a little screwdriver and I'm going to knock those air bubbles out. I want, I don't want any air bubbles. I need just a good solid glue joint there. Okay. And then I'm going to take the accelerator and spray that together all the way around this piece where it's going to be solid okay? with the CA glue. Okay. So I've now created a glue block and a glue chuck and a glue on there. Now, when I get done and I'm ready to take it off the glue block, I'm just going to use my parting tool, cut that outside bead of glue that's between here and this edge. And once I do that, it's going to be loose enough that I can use Mike's pry bar skew chisel and just pop that right off and that, that the glue blush is going to fall off. So I have now saved this entire piece of wood. I didn't waste any of my good wood that I paid good money for. Okay. All right. So that, that's it. That's a glue block. Great. Thank you. Okay. You've got uh, one more thing is you call the challenge for next month. So what's our challenge for next month? What was your challenge last month? Last month, it was uh, how to creatively fill uh, voids and things in your projects. Voids. Yours can have something to do with chucks if you want. Yeah, I'm going to. Um, it's going to be a bowl or vessel with a lid. So you have to mount it there. That'll be a good way for you to use that jam chuck idea. Because you have to mount that somehow. And it doesn't have to, you can maybe do a lidded vessel without being a big lidded vessel. It can be a little lidded vessel. Okay. So it can be big or little. So that's how that works. Okay. So I'd say a lidded vessel, whatever it might be okay. bowl, box, a lidded vessel. Okay. That sounds great. And we are, thank you very much uh, again. And we'll get our drawing right now so that if anybody needs to sneak out they'll be able to we need a honest person sue you're as honest as the persons that i find here do you want to <laughs> yeah you have no no weight or no skin in the game right all right Nine nine eight three is the number for the twenty five dollar gift certificate. All right, you get your choice of a twenty five dollar Metro gift certificate or this piece of Red Heart. <laughs> now we need to draw again. Now here, 
since you're checking it out, you draw again. <laughs> <laughs> And if you can draw your ticket out of there, I'd be I give you a lot of credit for that. <laughs> is the winner of this chunk of Red Heart. All right. There you go. Matthew. Matt. Screw it to you. Perfect. All right. So thank you. Thank you for everybody that's participated in this. This is kind of gives us a little bit of uh a little bit of cash for the club. And it's a it's kind of take takes the place of our um silent auction that we used to do. So Appreciate that. All right, we're going to get right into the challenge table. It doesn't look like we have too many over there, but if you brought a challenge piece in, uh, go on up, take a take a ticket and drop one in the bowl, Sue, and uh, explain to us how you filled or or addressed your um, issues with your project. Yeah, we okay. Um, before the pandemic, I went out to visit my brother in Seattle, and he took me to the woodcraft there, and I bought a piece of uh, walnut burl out of their cutoffs box, and I turned this vessel with it, and most of the burl was quite solid and didn't need any assistance, but there was one hole that went all the way through the side. And uh, so I mixed up some copper colored uh, mica powder with epoxy and filled in the hole. So I brought this, I, I've turned it a, a, a while back and I, it, everybody's had that piece that I, you turn it and then you see the cracks show up and you're going, well, it's hard to make a crack go away. You can um, accentuate it or you can try to fill it and, and get it to blend in as much as possible, but typically it's always going to show up. So in this one, um, I had some pretty good cracks on one end and I this isn't my best attempt at this because I've done it before, but I used a little texture to kind of hide the cracks that were in the bowl. And uh, you get it at certain angles and they show up more than others. That might have to do with just the texture that I used. And if I um, experimented a little bit, you might find that texture that really just hides it away. I, I did one one time using a Dremel tool for, for the texturing and literally had a bowl that had broke into three pieces and I glued back and it was obvious that it had been glued back. And I said, well, I'm going to just texture that area. And you couldn't tell after it was done. So it was a good way to kind of hide that mistake, give it a little interest um, and make it a worthwhile project instead of firewood. Okay, this was a cherry bowl that I made. It had a lot of voids and cracks in it. And so what I did is I went down to my cheap tool store that we're not going to mention, but its initials are Harbor Freight. And I got some epoxy. And, and then I went to the Dollar Tree store and I bought some women's eyeshadow for a dollar. So I mixed the epoxy and the women's eyeshadow and filled these cracks with uh, turquoise colored and both inside and outside. And that's how I uh, filled the voids on this one. Well, the eyeshadow comes in these little cakes. And so all you have to do is just take and, and uh, crunch it up. It, it comes apart and makes powder. Okay. I, I, I never used it. <laughs> well, it's a very cheap way of color. You can buy the expensive uh, mica powders now, though. But if you want to, this was, I did it on the cheap, just with a dollar. And then you can mix and match and make different colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
uh, my next door, old next door neighbor, he does takes down old barns. And so he has expanded now into furniture building. And so he gets walnut, he buys slabs two inch thick and he'll, because the short pieces he doesn't have any need for. So he'll call me up every so often and I'll go over and pick up a bunch of it. And so this piece had, the end was had wormholes. And so I just cut it down to, and put it in a, fill it with epoxy, uh, epoxy resin and silver mica powder. And uh, that's what, and that filled all the wormholes and then it turned it and it goes into my collection. <laughs> So this is a, a bowl that I uh, turned, I think about two years ago. And at the time, I'm pretty sure it was the biggest bowl I'd ever turned. And I once turned it. I was real excited about it until I got to the bottom. And there was a big knot I had not seen uh, when I first did it. And I thought, well, I can just, you know, keep going and keep going and keep going. And I'd have a much smaller bowl or I can leave it in there. And it sat on my shelf for about two years because I don't usually like to fill cracks or anything like that. Um, I just usually, they sit on my shelf till I get bored and then I burn them. This was such a big bowl that I, did, I didn't want to burn it. And it's just sat there for a long time. Um, so I ended up using um, uh, T88 epoxy, which is like a structural glue epoxy from uh, System 3. And it has about a 45 minute or so working time. So I was hoping that there's going to be enough working time that it could get into that um, I mean, get into the, uh, the cracks in there and kind of level out. And it did a pretty good job. It's not as good as the longer pour epoxies that might take five days to really cure. Um, but I've used it on smaller cracks and it's worked really well. So I have a couple little air bubbles in there that I, I could go back and fix if I really wanted to. The other thing I did is there was another crack here and one on this side um, from drying that cracked. Um, and if I feel it, I can feel, all right, I'm not quite good on my thickness right there. Um, so instead of, well, I, I used a little bit of epoxy on this one, um, but I also used some little uh, dowels to make little keys in there, um, little like Dutchman type idea. So I just drill a 3 8 inch hole, 3 8 inch dowel, glue that in there. And that's worked really well for me in the past. And this one was too thin for me to put any epoxy in it, but I could use um, <clears throat> uh, the glue in there to help kind of hold it all in place. And the nice thing about using uh, wood glue these days is it's stronger than the wood. So even if you're using a round dowel, more than likely the connection there, as long as you do a good job of that, is going to be a stronger connection. It's not going to split apart. So you don't need to do the actual butterfly shape that you might do to have a like a, a mechanical connection, but that that uh, wood glue is going to be strong enough to hold it in place. How long that'll work for, I don't know, um, but uh, but I like it. So there you go. I got a bunch of bowls uh, from Effie when he left. He just left them here. Um, and uh, um, Jerry Darter has been bringing in. And so I don't remember who this one is from. Um, and so there are three repairs on this. Uh, the first one is uh, this knot. And this is uh, also a T88 uh, epoxy. And I bought uh, a dozen... I don't even remember what they were called anymore, uh, of colors, liquid colors uh, on the internet for about 10 bucks or eight bucks or something a long time ago. And so this is, uh, according to the Chinese, the color of the element water. And so I poured that in there. I used tape on the bottom as, um, to seal it and then uh, put in a pour through the top. Um, and then can't see it very well, and I'm glad uh, I wrote the character for water with uh, epoxy. I had stained it black, and I used a brush, and it looks like a second grader did it. Uh, and then I poured some clear epoxy over it. Um, here and here are two uh, Osage Orange dowels. And what I did, there are some, uh, uh, there's a crack that goes here. 
and then these are uh, vertical cracks here. And so what I did was uh, I drilled um, through and then turned the dowel and put it in. And this one I drilled at an angle and then uh, put the dowel in. And I don't remember what glue I used for that. But as long as you're careful and stay inside the wall, the only uh, visual element that's left of the repair is just the little accent dowel looking. We got a, we got a $10 gift for the challenge uh, winner tonight. That's fine. And you did a good job. Tiffany, I'm not going to go ahead and turn you on. All right. Our last three numbers are 308 for the challenge. All right. Ten more numbers to have supplies and some of these numbers. Thank you to everybody that uh, participated in the challenge again this month. We always appreciate that. And let's roll right into our uh, show and tell table. So if you got a show and tell project, uh, get in line and bring it on up. This is a cherry acorn box, which is currently stuck. That's a, a much more tight fit than my usual boxes. Uh, this I turned quite a little bit while ago, and it had a lid that was small and sat fairly close on top there, and it got lost somewhere. And I had a piece of cherry that was uh, used as a uh, jam chuck at one point, and I said, well, I could do something with that. So it wound up as an acorn top. I haven't turned too much in the last month or so, but I have been experimenting with, there was a shape that I was going for. This is where I started. And that, that was, fanned out a little bit too much this one was my second one and is probably closest to the shape i was after it was a clay vase that i had seen that had that kind of shape and this one i kind of appreciated the most out of all of them is kind of a in between these two but my uh what i was playing around with was just uh textures and taking uh non wood related textures and applying them to wood so i i am i'm working on a jungle theme here i still haven't done my bingo tiger yet but i kind of got my giraffe going on here got my cheetah going on here which i i was googling images of that pattern and kind of getting an idea and then going in with the wood burner and, and burning it into the wood my last one was the zebra and uh took it down but uh, found found the shape to be really good. I'm going to do more of them. And I've got a couple other patterns, jungle patterns that I'm going to go with. And I'll have me a nice, I don't know, jungle set of bowls. <laughs> I'm going to borrow the plaque. This was, this was actually my first turning back from having fell off of a step stool and broke my wrist, leg, ankle, and foot. So um, that was back in October. In the fall, I took a fall. So the Northland challenge was to do a box. So I decided to do a loose fitted lid box, but it had to be a spinning top lid. Okay. So I made it as a spinning top lid. And of course, I had to get a little carried away. Make some more spinning tops. Make some more spinning tops. 
you know, lots of little ones here. So, and yes, they do all spin. Got to work a little, work a little harder to make the really little ones spin. But again, I had to get even more of showing off, make something really little, make my little box, right? You had a big box, you have to have a little box. And of course I had to show off again too. I had to make one more spinning top. If I can get a hold of it, I can actually spin it. There it goes. So there you go. Thank you. So as you all know, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. So I made Valentine's for the ladies in the family. And uh, I made them out of cherry, uh, some quarter sawn ash, uh, some oak, and uh, the black heart out of walnut. So, and then, uh, and so I turned them between, let's see, how'd I do that? You would ask. I turned them between centers, first of all, got them round. Then I cut out the uh, a paper pattern of a heart and cut that out on the bandsaw. And then I, uh, I made a uh, tenon and uh, chucked it on there. I have uh, some spigot jaws that will, uh, I can chuck on a small tenon. And so I cut them all, and then I used a jam chuck to cut the backside. Yeah. And also, I thought, well, I wanted to make a fish. So this is turned on the lathe. I turned it uh, round, turned the profile of the fish, and then I offset uh, the axis. So this is a three axis turn. And then I cut the sides to make it oval shape. And um, this was a prototype. This was my proof of concept. So this is a four by four piece of pine. Um, and then I kind of decided to do a little embellishment. Uh, down at SWAT, I saw Trent Bosch demonstration and he was Cutting in, uh, uh, making the uh, uh, the uh, decorative decorative um, uh, cuts on the on the wood. So I thought, well, I'm going to try and make scales on there. So I used a Dremel, and I I made scales to go on there, uh, and then I dyed it with uh, uh, blue uh, dye stain, and the grains of the pine showed through there. It showed really good on my first coat of stain, kind of covers it up on the second coat of stain. I made a fin for it and then uh, the dorsal fin and then I made some pectoral fins. These are also turned. I turned the uh, the profile and then I sanded it down. And uh, also on, on the fin, I sanded it on a disc sander. And then the bandsaw to cut the mouth. The eyes are made out of uh, brass tubing with a dowel rod, ebonized dowel rod in the middle for the eyes. And I thought, well, I tried something else. This was uh, some repurposed two by fours, two of them glued together. And so I made it a little bit longer and this is a five axis turn. So I actually turned the profile and then um, I offset uh, holes in uh, five millimeter increments. So the first was the center turn to cut the profile of the, of the fish. Uh, and then I turned the, um, let's see, 20 millimeters, the 20 millimeter hole. I, I turned the outside, I was able to turn the, the edges, 
And so then I came back in in 10 millimeter and cut the top and the bottom to make it more, yeah. And so these have a lot of sanding that goes on with them. So these were prototypes, but these, I went ahead and tried the painting. I also did the fins um, on the lathe. The dorsal fin is just a piece of pine and uh, doweled with uh, toothpicks. The eyes are also the, the brass tubing. And so I made that, but there's so much sanding into it. And after I finished them, I've decided that this is probably the last fish I'm going to make. And so, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, this is uh, another set of bowls that came from uh, Jerry's, uh, Jerry Darter's uh, shop. He was cleaning up. This is something he had cored a long time ago. And uh, he just sat there, collected dust. He decided to clean up. And so when I got it, uh, it, had none, it hadn't been turned at all. It didn't have any tenons on it. it, it, it well, I take it back. I mean, it had been cored uh, completely dry. And so I just uh, turned it and put on that Danish oil finish. Um, it's nice. I like them. I like the uh, this rim. I've done it before. It's a little uh, undercut. They write about it in the magazines. The only real disappointment is uh, the further up, you know, the smaller the bowl gets, the less uh, exciting the grain is. I use that same Danish oil. Uh, so it's got a nice satiny finish. It's about, uh, like I had three coats, maybe four. Drank a little bit of uh, finish in the more rotted places. Hey, thanks everybody for uh, bringing in the challenge or the show and tell items. It's always fun to see the variations that we get out of the club. And I think that brings us to the end of our meeting tonight. Um, appreciate y'all showing up, especially day after the Chiefs game. I mean, you know, <laughs> given another night to to up, you know, over the week is always hard. But um, if you ha if you can stick around for a little bit and help put the chairs and the equipment and get the equipment back out for Matthew for tomorrow. Um, that's very helpful. And uh, if any of you got any questions or need any, any information on Sean, let me know and uh, we'll get that for you. But thanks again for showing up and we will see you next month. Don't forget, we got potential giveaways of uh, glue samples next month. So you want to show up. <laughs> Thank you.